Good morning, folks. We've got space weather to see, some earthquakes near the west coast, an update on the DART impact to the Hera asteroid, solar forcing of ozone levels, and another excellent look at how solar flares impact our planet. Let's start with the last 24 hours on our star, and there was one very long duration M-class solar flare, small filament snaps, and the sunspot active regions continue turning through. Solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are relatively quiet as well. Let's take a look at some of these bigger events a bit closer, and we'll start with the long duration flare. That mountain-like feature is the long duration M-class event, and you can see how different it looks from the impulsive flare spikes. The event occurred at the big sunspots beginning to depart on the north, as expected, it has gotten active as it turns away from the Earth, and its CME is not heading this way. There was also a small filament eruption on the south. NOAA models suggest we could take a glancing blow, but it would be so weak it wouldn't be much of a concern at all. We'll watch that other filament incoming behind it, but now we're on to quakes. There's been a swarm building off the west coast near the California-Oregon border. Hopefully these are not foreshocks, but we are watching this region closely. Interesting study out on Hera asteroid after the DART impact. Scientists had expected a crater, but it's actually looking like the impact completely reshaped the asteroid. A flyby in the near future will tell us for sure, but the scopes are indicating a massive change. Up next, we're looking at yet another paper on solar forcing of total column ozone. Often these papers focus on how the particle flux from the sun destroys ozone, but this one also hits the photoionizing production including during solar flares. But the more important solar flare paper today follows up the magnetic crochet article from a few days ago. This one describes how solar flares create electric current through the ionosphere, which would then of course impact the global electric circuit throughout the atmosphere. It's completely different from the high frequency radio blackouts, which are only impacted under the flare zone facing the sun at the time. But not unlike a drop of water sends out ripples in a pond, the ionospheric layer is a coherent electric system and a drop of electromagnetic excitation from a flare ripples out and impacts the entire world, especially through the equatorial electrojet excitement. This, combined with the magnetic crochet effect, is how you can get enhanced electrical activity anywhere in the world long before any CME impact arrives in the solar wind. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.